Hello, and welcome to the Powerful Personal Brand Podcast, where I and my guests share tips to help and inspire you to build a great personal brand to increase your visibility and authority. I am your host, Claire Bond, and on today's episode, I am very excited to be joined by Jem Fuller. What are like three things that you can tell somebody that they can do today to be a better communicator? Okay, so the first one I heard um, at the Global Mindful Leader Forum in 2014, and there was an American keynote speaker. I can't even remember his name, but he reminded me of like a combination of Buddha and the Dalai Lama and Eckhart Tolle, you know, and he walked onto stage. He was quite a small man, and the whole auditorium just went silent. He just had this presence about him and he was obviously projected onto this big screen behind him on the stage. And he said two things that really stuck with me and it was just the right time to hear them because I I went and took those things and created um, habitual practices in my life. And one of them, one of the things he said was pause often, pause often. And I went, wow, what does he mean by that? Pause often. So I took that and I literally created this thing that I call pause moments or pause moments is really just in between two things. So you've finished sending an email and you're about to go on to the next thing. Just pause, take a breath and then continue. Or I find it really effective when you're on your way somewhere. So you're going from the office to the car. As you're walking to the car, stop, pause, take a breath and continue. Now this might sound too simple to be a a game changer or to be effective, but it's deceptively simple. Mm. When we pause often, we're creating these little moments to recalibrate back to our place of equanimity, back to our calm center. You know, I find them really helpful if you're running late. I hate running late for things. Yeah. And if I'm running late and I get to my laptop and I'm about to open my laptop and I'm late for a Zoom meeting, before opening the laptop, pause, take a breath and continue. So I'm only three seconds later to the meeting, Mm -hmm. but I'm showing up in a different state. Yeah. Um, Something else that I prescribe to my clients and I insist upon is introducing a practice of mindfulness um, into their day-to-day lives, whether it's just two minutes of mindfulness before they get up in the morning or two or five minutes of mindfulness before they go to sleep. So mindfulness meditation Mm -hmm. or integrated mindfulness. And mindfulness quite simply is just an attention to the present moment. So not thinking about what's just happened or not thinking about what I need to do tomorrow, just simply noticing what I can notice in this moment. So you can mindfully brush your teeth. You know, people say to me, Gem, I can't meditate. I've got too busy a brain. And I say, well, welcome to being human. (laughs) We've all got busy brains. We've all got this, you know, incessant stream of thoughts that are happening. That's okay. They can be an object of your attention as well. Mm. You know, you can just notice your thoughts also. Yeah. So, yes, the pause moments are are mindfulness. And then the dedicated mindfulness is meditation. Um, I'm a big fan of of, um, an American guy, Sam Harris. I'm not sure if you've listened to Sam Harris before. And and I, I use his meditation app called Waking Up. And he explains it really well. He's, he's got a a really good, um, literal understanding of what mindfulness meditation actually is and i find that very helpful Mm -hmm. anyway there's a plug for your app sam um so that's the the second tip the third tip that i would offer today and it's a practice as well and it is also a mindfulness practice to a certain degree is conscious listening Mm -hmm. and really taking the art of listening to another level so that when you're listening you know, not sitting there as the other person's talking, saying, oh, but in your mind, you're going, oh, but I'm going to rebut that with that, or oh, I'm going to say this. As soon as I get a chance to speak, I'm going to, I, I know what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. To, to put that to the side for a second and to become mindful in the present moment and to really lean in and seek to understand, especially if the person has a controversial point of view to you to your thinking and you know like i said before we have this idea of how we think things should be and i love the idea of just loosening your grip just loosen your grip on the way you think things should be and really lean in and seek to understand it's a beautiful practice Mm -hmm. and claire something i've found also that as a listener you can have so much to do with the quality of the communication because when you're listening and giving all of yourself to that person on some level, they pick up on it yeah. and they relax and they communicate more effectively. They become more eloquent 
mm-hmm. they become more in the zone of sharing because you're so present in the listening. Right. I love those tips. So it's a really beautiful relationship. Yeah. yeah. So w- one thing that came to my mind as well when you mentioned the pause often. So I don't know if you have a dog, but um, my my dog, we had many issues with him in the very beginning and we hired a dog trainer. And he would he would do the shaking and he would just shake so violently that his feet like almost came off and we were just like, what is that? Why does the dog do that? And um, the trainer basically just says he changes his kind of his, his attitude, his state of mind. So that's the dog's pause uh-huh. often is there shaking when you, you notice that they kind of change okay well i was i was here doing this now i'm going to shake shake it off that's their shit that's yes, their pause yes. often is is the dog I so love that. anyway so it's kind of interesting you think about we consciously have to say okay we should do this but an animal just does it naturally 